Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey and Daytona, Florida. So I had um, two different people reach out to me um, with a similar question. So first was uh, one of my clients. He wasn't sure what amplifier to buy because he was using Euphoria 10 inch woofers, the carbon fibers, and they're rated at three ohms. So he wasn't sure if he could use a two ohm amplifier because three ohms and three ohms in parallel would be less than two ohms. So he's gonna we use one ohm amplifier. I explained to him that while the woofer's playing, it actually averages about four ohms. So that's why it's always good to use a two ohm test. The other person that I had the discussion with was actually um, a shop owner that um, we had a difference of opinion on how these bikes should be wired and he told me that I run way too much power to these woofers and he would never put a 3000.1 2 ohms on woofers that are 7 800 watts RMS. Uh, what he didn't realize is we don't go by the rating on the box, we actually test every single woofer. So we're not guessing, that's the great part about doing audio. It's science, it's math, it can be measured, it can be proven. So that's what I did in this case. So I took a little time out of my day to take a measurement to show both of them. So when you have a woofer and you're looking at the data sheet, you have to remember that data sheet is what the woofer does with no power applied just sitting on the table. Once you put the woofer in an enclosure, it changes some of the parameters of the speaker. Once you put the woofer in a small enclosure, you get what the SPL guys like to call box rise. So what that means is with the woofer in a small enclosure playing music, the four ohm woofer, or three ohm woofer, two ohm woofer will actually be a lot higher than that. Now, a lot of people guess and they make the bike sound good or the car sound good by guessing. We don't want to guess, we want to measure. That way we can make the woofer perform in the enclosure that we want to use. And that way we don't have to keep switching woofers until we find the right one. We can literally measure and know whether it's going to work before we do the build. So we took uh, these woofers that install was done by another shop. We just wanted to put the correct amplifier in there. The other shop had put a 1600.1. Customer wasn't happy with the output of the woofers. So we did a 3000.1 2 ohm across two Euphoria Expert carbon fibers. Um, the woofers are listed as three ohm woofers, both of them in parallel as we ran our test and our sweep never dropped below 2.2 .2 ohms together while playing. The other thing you wanna look at is usable frequency. So if you're gonna cross the woofer over from let's say 50 to 200 Hertz, 40 to 500, whatever frequency you choose to use for whatever reason, using the DMRA SMD tool, the signature generator, ISMG. You can actually send a tone through the woofers while they're wired in parallel. So we hooked up both bags together with a jumper and then sent signal through the woofers. So we don't care what it does at five Hertz, 10 Hertz, 15 Hertz, 20 Hertz, because we're gonna set a bandpass filter. So we want the woofer start to play at 40 or 50 Hertz. So we start measuring at 40. And then in this case, we didn't want the woofer playing over 200. So since we're band passing 40 to 200 or 50 to 200, we're only concerned with the numbers from 40 to 200. On top of that, if the bag is ported, you're gonna notice a huge jump in impedance. That means the resistance of the woofer goes up at the tuning frequency of the port. So let's say the bag is tuned to 50 Hertz. At 50 Hertz, you're gonna see a huge jump, like eight ohms, 10 ohms, 15 ohms, 16 ohms, at 16 ohms, the 3000.1 is doing almost no power, like literally almost no power. And then I pause the video to do the math real quick. At 16 ohms, the woofers are getting 175 watts a piece from a 3000 watt amplifier. So there's a lot of factors to take in. Also, people don't realize a 3000 watt amplifier cannot do 3000 watts with a four gauge power input. With a four gauge power input, you'll be lucky if you get the amplifier to do 2,000, 2,100 watts. It's a limitation of the current that the power wire can flow. It's not a limitation of the amplifier. If you want a 3,000 watt amp to do 3,000 watts, you have to do, if the amp doesn't have zero gauge input, like the sound digital amps, 
um, you have to do a adapter, zero gauge to four gauge metal adapter, then that's the only way the amplifier stands a chance of doing 3000 watts. It also can't do 3000 watts on a stock battery. So you need an upgraded battery like a lithium, zero gauge input, zero to four gauge adapter, and then the amplifier stands a chance of doing 3000 watts. But let's say it's a perfect world and the amplifier is a chance of doing 3000 watts with four gauge oxygen free copper wire, then it would be seeing 175 watts per woofer. If we're in the real world and you're using four gauge, not zero gauge, and the woofers are averaging about 1100 watts a piece of full power that they can get, then they're gonna be getting like 75 watts a piece at the tuning frequency of the port if the impedance rises up to like 16 ohms. So these amplifiers are not doing anywhere near what you think they're doing because of what's going on inside the bag while the music's playing. Um, signal generator, you can buy one for, you can buy a used one online for like 200 bucks. I think brand new, they're like 500 bucks, but it's a useful tool. I'm gonna to show you how we use it in the video, and then I'm gonna show you the chart that we wrote down. And that's how we're able to put a 3K on 10 inch mid bass drivers and not blow them up. On Manny's bike, we have a 5,000.1 on mid bass drivers. And on Manny's bike, we also did the same chart. And the most the woofers will ever see, and Manny's running double zero gauge to his amplifier. The most the woofers will ever see, maybe 1500 watts a piece. And, but that's neither here nor there. So hope this video is useful for some of you guys. I hope it helps you understand why we get away with running such big power on these mid base drivers, subwoofers in these saddle bags. It's because of the impedance rise or the box rise, whatever you want to call it. But the face value that you think the woofer is getting, it's really not getting. Check it out. I wonder if the client knows that the shop ground down his $900 woofer in order to get it to fit in the saddlebag. I don't think that's gonna be covered under warranty. Okay, so out of the enclosure, free air, starting at seven hertz, we have an impedance of three ohms. Once we get into usable frequencies, like 29 hertz, the woofer's already jumped up to four ohms. At 46 hertz, we're at 17 ohms, which means the amp would be doing almost no work. Back to four ohms at 200 hertz. So we're already higher than we would ever play the woofer, and we're at 5.6 ohms at 650 hertz. So now we're gonna drop it in the enclosure and see what that does to the numbers. So now woofer in the enclosure. At 21 hertz, we're already at four ohms. 42 hertz, we're at 14, 15 ohms. Sixty hertz, ten ohms. So you see, this woofer is not getting anywhere near the full fifteen hundred watts that the amps capable of providing. So similar results in the enclosure. Six hundred fifty hertz, five point nine ohms. So now we're gonna do them both together and we're actually gonna write down the numbers so we can go over. Okay, so both woofers connected in parallel. So going by the manual of the woofers, we would be at 1.5 ohms. So look at that, at seven hertz, we're at 1.8, which is close enough. But once we start moving it to a usable frequency, so at 7.9 hertz, we are at 1.8 ohms. So once we bump it up to a usable frequency, like 30 hertz, we are at 2.5 ohms. So that's already one ohm higher than the 1.5 that the paperwork led us to believe. So at 30 hertz, we are 2.5 ohms. At 40 hertz, we're at five ohms. This is both woofers in parallel. At 
at 50 hertz, we are at 10 ohms. Sixty hertz, we are at five point two ohms. Seventy hertz, we are at three point four ohms. Eighty hertz, we are at two point five ohms. Ninety hertz, we are at two point three ohms. One hundred hertz. We're at 2.3 ohms. 120 hertz, we're at 2.5 ohms. 140 hertz, we're at 2.1 ohms. 200 hertz, we're at 2.1 ohms. 300 hertz, we're at 2.3 ohms. 650 hertz, we're at 2.9 ohms. So we never drop below two ohms. The amplifier is never in danger. And that is the usable frequency with, watt, with wattage applied in real time. Okay, so in closing, with a good tune, the correct port, DSP properly set up, gains properly set up so you're not clipping. A dubs base knob or something similar in the front so you can see the clip indicator when you're hitting it hard and overdriving the woofer. You will not blow woofers. If you run it by the numbers, we've proven it time and time again, you can run clean power, you get away with running double, triple, quadruple RMS power on these woofers if it's clean and it's calculated and it's done right and you're able to measure. We we're able to measure everything here at the shop. And then we have good results. So thank you. Have a great night.